My name is Melissa Miller Burns. I am the presiding judge of the Las Cruces Municipal Court. It's a position that I have held for the past 12 years. Prior to becoming the presiding judge in 1999, I was a prosecutor for the city for 10 years. Uh, during my tenure as presiding judge, um, I became a certified court executive and fellow of the Institute for Court Management through the National Center for State Courts uh, in order to improve my sk administrative skills. The presiding judgeship it establishes practices uh, and procedures related to uh, and policy related to judicial administration principles in addition to administering the budget, personnel issues, as well as uh, hearing cases. Uh, and I'm running for re-election. Thank you. My name is Frank Norman Chavez, and I've been an attorney for over 40 years, 40 plus years. I've, uh, the last bit of my career has been with Rosner and Chavez, uh, a small law firm, two-person law firm, and, before, and after that, or before that, was with the largest law firm in town, Reeves, Chavez, Walker, and Albers, which is over on 300 Water Street. I was the uh, president for 22 consecutive years with that law firm. That law firm has a, had a budget or a gross income much larger than the budget for the municipal court system. At our peak, we had 35 employees, uh, 12 attorneys, and we did uh, various type of litigation in, the, in that law firm. Prior to that, I was with the city. I was city attorney for a little bit less than 10 years, nine and a, nine and a half years. The first two years, I was a city prosecutor in the same court that Judge Miller Burns is talking about, municipal court, and I handled many, many cases, uh, DWI cases, and all the panoply of uh, municipal ordinances. Prior to that, I was with the Attorney General's office, and I spent three years with the Attorney General's office uh, under two Attorney Generals. I uh, had the, uh, the good luck to be assigned to the Appellate Division, and I handled over 40 cases, 41 cases, to the Supreme Court or the Court of Appeals. All those are recorded cases. Um, since I've been in practice, I've been before the 10th Circuit Court of Appeals in Denver. Uh, I have a little resume which I'm going to give you at the end of this presentation that put, puts up all the statistical data. And, and as w the electronic age that has come into being, I have a recordation of almost all the cases I've handled. Okay. And I'll give you a little insight as to where I've been and where I'm going. Well, first of all, let me address the, the incident that happened in the July incident right. you referred to. Um, the week prior to that, uh, the municipal court judges were at mandatory training. Uh, it's mandatory, mandatory as per the state Supreme Court. It, it happens annually. Uh, then I believe there was a holiday as, as well, in addition to uh, the police officers having some sort of blitz ticket blitz and it was the perfect storm. <laughs> so on the next day of operations uh, there was a long line and um, it was a hot day also the weather was not cooperative so we spent all day for two days you know from open to close uh, processing those people as quickly as possible and then it dis the line dissipated to, to normal levels. In order to prevent that from happening in, in the future from now on, we always have a skeletal staff available when the judges are at training. Uh, normally what we do is we'd have a, um, the municipal court staff have internal in-service in training, but what we'll do is have a, 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 a skeletal staff to process people on a, so that we don't have that line building when we get back. The other thing is extending hours. Yes, it has helped uh, with our case management because there's numerous reasons why people come to the court. We had over 79,000 people in our doors this past year. They come there to pay fines. They come there to uh, file papers with the court compliance office. They come there to show proof of the, uh, uh, that they need for a dismissal of a ticket. They also bring their family members, which is problematic. How, uh, what we uh, have done since is we published on the city's website and we've made it available uh, we've published, had uh, PIO, PIO, I believe, uh, also different co community communications with regard to the city's website as to what's available 
on the court's website. You can uh, pay your fine, uh, the docket's available, what our services are. Also, there are forms which you can file to waive your appearance to enter a plea, uh, things of that nature, in order to prevent so many people descending upon the court. It could also be remedied by us having the entire building. The building itself is, a, is the largest barrier to people's access to justice because we are on the one side. And if we were permitted to expand over to the other side, which we had intended to do, and we're still trying to negotiate that to happen, uh, we could uh, implement all these windows, like at the DMV, have all these windows, and when we process people, there's a, you know, give them the number, have them sit comfortably in the other courtrooms that are on the other side, sit comfortably, organize people, ask her what their need is, and process them that way. And that's what we're taking steps to do. When I was prosecuting in the court years before Judge Miller Burns came on the scene, we had uh, a, a courtroom over at the police department, and we had court hearings on Wednesday nights and on Saturday mornings. As a prosecutor, I didn't particularly like that because it uh, impacted my weekends and my evenings, but we did it. Mm -hmm. And we cut down the number of, of personnel or people that had to walk through the courts. As an observer of this court, I've been very concerned about that line problem out there, uh, both in the summer with the heat and the winter with the cold. Uh, I've been following the city council's ideas on retrofitting the building, <clears throat> possibly expanding the building, possibly moving it to the old administrative building on Alameda Street, or possibly even building a new building. All of those things take money, and it would possibly take a bond, a floating of a bond issue to do that. Short-term solutions are the, are the short-term answer. <clears throat> I think Judge Burns hit the nail on the head when she said that we need to look at what the Motor Vehicle Division does. I think that one of the things we can do is possibly, and, and it may impact on the dignity and the decorum of the courts, but have people come in and take a number and then have a, a very well-lit or very uh, dignified uh, sign that would call the numbers up as they, are, they need to go in and pay their fines or whatever else their, their business might be. But innovative ideas need to be explored, not only by people like me or by Judge Burns, but others such as architects that can study traffic patterns and things of that nature. We're not the experts on those types of things. Even a, a slight retrofit with the expansion of those judges on the other side of the building might be a short-term solution, and that would not take a, an awful lot of money, but then there's leases involved in that type of thing. I am a strong advocate of uh, expanding the court hours because you have, you have basically 29 full-time employees and you can stagger it so some people can work beyond the normal 8 to 5 uh, complement of hours that is necessary to serve the public. If I'm elected, I will of course look to all these possible solutions because I see that as one of the major problems with the court system today, that the municipal court system, and it has to be solved. Okay. Well, I think it's very important because I think we have to have continuity with that permanent judge so that when one judge is not available, the permanent judge is able to take up the workload. The pro tem judges right now, as I understand it, are doing, I think it's Kerry Ryan, mm -hmm. is doing a very good job. He's a very competent attorney. But what it is, it's a makeshift solution that uh, needs permanency. And I would, uh, I, I know that uh, there's going to be an appointment and I think it's going to be by the city council because under the charter, the city council appoints the new permanent judge, which is the uh, division two judge, they call it. So I'm optimistic that that's going to take place pretty soon. But it is best to have a permanent judge as opposed to a pro tem judge, no matter how qualified the pro tem judge, pro tem judge is. So that's my take on it. First off, uh, Judge Locatelli resigned and um, we have always used Kerry Ryan as our alternate judge, which um, he has been assigned to the municipal court for shoot, at least 10 years since I've been judge, even before then. He's very competent, he knows the system, he makes himself available as to what the court's needs are in accordance with our docket system. Um, so it's been very effective. How, however, I do believe that the city's charter needs to be honored and that a uh, second judge needs to be appointed by the city council so that the people's interest, the 
is represented because the people voted for the city council and I believe they have a voice with their counselor and their counselor's voice should be heard as to who the next judge should be in the appointment process. Um, but otherwise I, I'm not aware of any other um, problems that would, has arisen, arose. <laughs> and, um, because we're using an alternate judge. I would like to point out that the, uh, the code also provides, there used to be a numerical restriction on how many alternate judges could, uh, could be appointed. It used to be restricted to two. That was amended uh, about four or five years ago to where there's no numerical restriction. So because we're interdependent upon the police department, how many tickets are issued or whatever, so if they get a grant and, and issue a ton of tickets that are filed in our court, we can increase how many more alternates that we need that would have to just be sworn in by the mayor and it, it would happen uh, immediately if, we, if there was a need for an additional alternate.